Thank you for the ministry of the Holy Spirit through the body of Christ. Every cell is important. Every individual is very important, Father. And we know that. And we thank you for the privilege of being able to minister to those that are in the body of Christ. And we thank you for all that you've done and what you, <clears throat> what you are doing now and what you're going to do. And we just give you the praise and the glory. In Jesus' name we do pray. Amen. I've been studying, of course, on grace, not only studying it, but meditating on it, chewing on it, eating it, just going over all the different scriptures about grace, asking for the spirit of wisdom and revelation to rest upon me that God might show me a little bit about grace. Do I understand it all? No. But the little bit I do understand is really exciting me. It is doing something in my own life, in my spirit. And as I search out these scriptures in the Bible and meditate on them and read them and write them down, if you notice, I have, I have pads like this. I write my scriptures. I, I, have, I don't have any notes. I just have the Word of God uh, written on, on it. And, and I can look at it and, uh, and preach on it <clears throat> because... God just lets me know what it means by His Spirit. And, uh, of course, I didn't come overnight. Not that I know everything, but what He shows me, I do know. And I have faith in His Word. But look at that scripture in James 4, 6. Starting with James 4, 6. Powerful scripture, and I'm going to show you what the Lord has given to me as I meditate on that scripture and as I read James 4, 6. Now notice this, but he. Now remember when you read the word of God, you find out, but he. Who is he there? God. Everybody say God. All right, so, but God gives us. And who is us? That's us. <laughs> wow. And what does he give us? More and more grace, which we know we use the word unmerited favor, but also grace has different aspects to it, different aspects. For example, the power of the Holy Spirit uh, has healing. It has salvation. The Bible says we're saved. How? By grace. So grace, God's unmerited favor, has the power to save us. <clears throat> so look what it says. But he, that is God, gives us more and more, I like that, grace power of the Holy Spirit to meet, to meet this evil tendency and all others fully. Now, all others what? All other tendencies. Can you see that? All right, all of us have tendencies, okay? Now, this is how I'm using this scripture <clears throat> in many different ways. When I'm sitting down at the table to eat, I have a problem eating too much. <clears throat> Anybody in here has a problem? Okay. So, what do you, how do, so you use the Word of God. You bring the Word of God. You speak the Word of God. Father, I have a tendency to eat too much. And it's showing and it's manifesting itself. Of course, you all can't tell, can you? <laughs> and I can't hide it. <laughs> so, I have a tendency, see, to eat too much. And God, I need more and more of your what? Grace. To meet this tendency of eating everything on the plate. Now, I'm not blaming Susan. Susan is one that will fill your plate to the brim. She likes to show hospitality, and I keep saying, honey, we're not working in the fields anymore. We don't quite need that much food on the plate. But somehow she doesn't get the message. And so that tendency to not want to make her feel bad by not eating all the good food that she's fixed for me, I eat it. Because I don't want to hurt her feelings. And, you know, it's showing up on daddy. You know what I mean? <laughs> 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 
But you see, we all have those tendencies. It's not that it's dirt sin, it's, but, but it's unhealthy, okay? It's unhealthy. And so what do I do? I say what the Word of God says. What does the Word of God say? God says he'll give me more and more grace. For what? To meet that tendency to eat too much. But look what it says. And, meet the, and, and to, to meet evil, the evil tendency and all others fully. All others what? Tendencies. Okay? So the grace can meet and work. Now, I've seen it working already. It's just like I don't want it. It's like I eat a certain amount, and I'm full, and I'm satisfied, and I, I just say, honey, can you put this in the refrigerator, and I'll, you know, I'll eat it later uh, or something. She said, well, yeah, fine. So it's working already, okay? So you got to remember that. God's grace. Now, Paul says, I am what I am by the grace of God, okay? So we're talking about the grace of God. Now, I want you to turn to Hebrews 4.16. 4.16 is very important. Powerful scripture. Number one, always be honest before God. I want everybody to look at me. I want everybody to look at me. Be honest with God. Lord, here I am. You see everything anyway. So don't try to hide anything. Hello? How many has ever been there? Yeah. But we ain't there no more. God sees everything, all right, but he still loves us. Remember that. Okay, now look at uh, Hebrews 4.16. Let us, let us, that's let us in the Bible. You didn't know let us was in the Bible? There it is right there, let us. All right, let us then fearlessly and confidently and boldly Draw near to the throne of grace. Can we understand that? You know, in the Old Testament, folks like us never got to the uh, Holy of Holies. Only the high priest was able to go into the Holy of Holies once a year and carry blood in there for himself, for his own sins, and for the sins of the nation, for the people. But we, today... Christ has opened up the curtain, split from top to bottom, and now we can come to the Father, our Heavenly Father, full of grace and mercy, and come boldly, confidently. And notice, draw near to the throne of grace. Now, the throne of grace can be anywhere. We were at the throne of grace this morning. You can be in your car and come before the throne of grace. In the middle of the night, on the battlefield, at Walmart, anywhere, you can come boldly. I want to say that again, come boldly. That sounds to me like it's not fearful. Fearlessly, look at that word, fearlessly, without fear. That is what Jesus Christ has done for us. Made a way that we come right into the presence of God Almighty. We're talking about God that created everything. God spoke and mountains came into existence. God spoke and the universe came into being. And they tell me that it's still growing. Science is finding out it's just being stretched further and further out. Now, I want you to, I want you to see something here. It's God that's inviting us to his, the throne. Mike, would you come up here, please? I think my left hand. Because I got a bad finger there. I invited him to come. Shake my hand. Good to see you, brother. Love you. Appreciate you, too. We could probably sit here and have a little fellowship, but you all might get bored, so we won't do it. Appreciate you, brother. He had to come. He didn't come with, he wasn't fearful. He came because he knows the grace of God. Look what it says. The throne of God 
unmerited favor to us sinners. Now, we used to be sinners, but now we're saints. But if we have sinned, we know John for, uh, uh, John 1, uh, 9, we confess our sins. God is faithful and just to forgive us and cleanse us from all unrighteousness, and we receive that. Because I don't get up in the morning trying to sin. First thing I do when I get up in the morning, I say, good morning, God. Then I look at my precious wife and I say, good morning, honey, baby. How you doing, sugar? She looks at me, blinks her little eyes and says, I got breakfast almost ready for you. And I go, thank you. Wonderful. Oh, I tell you, been married 60. Well, let's don't go that way. All right, here we go. <clears throat> the throne of God. Unmerited favor to us. Unmerited favor to us that we may receive. Everybody say receive. You know, you can go to the throne and don't receive anything. The Bible says, as many as received him, Christ, God gave him or us the power, the authority to become sons of God. we got to receive it. All right. So if we could take that first scripture that we had in James chapter 4, verse 6. Lord, you know, I have a tendency not to believe the word of God. Now we're using the word. I have a tendency to not believe the word of God. Lord, I ask you that you would pour more grace into me. Pour more grace into me, Lord, that I can be a, a believe all the way. I can believe to the, to the uttermost that you're a man that you cannot. Lord, I ask for that grace to deal with that tendency in me that, that still uh, has that little doubt in the back of my mind. God, give me more grace. Oh, God. Oh, and he'll pour it in. He'll pour it in. He'll pour it in. Hello? Say, say, say we got to, to, we just can't say it now, mundane, but down to sleep, but praise the Lord, but so to keep. We got to open our mouth. We got to pray the word of God with boldness. Come boldly to the throne of God. Devil, get out of my way. I'm coming to the throne to receive the grace and the power that I need to overcome the world, the flesh, and the devil. Ah! Amen? Amen? All right. No timid. No timid. That's, God's not given us a spirit of timidness. Did I pronounce that right? That was close. That's good enough. Is that good? That's all right. That word fear, other translations, is timid. Go on, devil. Shoot. Shoot, devil. Shoot. No way. You stand there with all the boldness of the Holy Ghost on you, and you say, I want you to know, devil, you were whipped 2,000 years ago at Calvary. I want you to know that death was dealt with at Calvary. I cannot die. I have eternal life. These things have been written that you might know that you have eternal life. Now. I ain't got no cancer. This body here might have a little bit of it, but God has made provisions for that. And I need this body right now because I want to keep on preaching the Word of God to at least till I get a hundred. And by then, we ought to be out of here. What is age to God? Nothing. Nothing. What is cancer? What is the Nothing. God took care of that at Calvary. You say, well, Bob, I don't, I think you just, you just like to holler. No, I have been through the th threshing machine, but I'm not going into that tonight. I know what it is to be put in, <laughs> spit out on the other side, brought back around, put back in, <laughs> spit through that machine again, brought back out by the devil, put back into the machine, <laughs> right through the machine again, and just on, on and on. We may have to wash this again, okay? <laughs> Thank you for washing. Frank says, no way. You wash it. Okay, I'll do it. No problem. Put a little water on. See, the church needs to be toughened up. This hanky-panky business, 
out the door it goes. I know in whom I have believed. And I am persuaded that he's able to keep that which I have entrusted to him. I cannot die. Oh, I might change. My body may change. I may change addresses. See, there's one funeral that I will never go to. My own. How many of you understands that? Raise your hands if you understand that. Because, see, I won't be in this body. See, absent from the body, present with the Lord. And I tell Susan, I mean, don't, all the flowers and the, I mean, you know, everybody's different. But, you know, just a wooden, Frank will make me a coffin. Give him the thousand, two hundred thousand, whatever they charge now. It, you know, just put me in a, in a wooden box, nail it down where I can't get out, <laughs> and dig the hole, put me in, cover me up, and put my Bible in there. Well, I won't really be in there. I'm going to be in heaven. See, a, say, everybody say absent from these bodies, present with the Lord. None of you are going to die. Am I preaching heresy? Huh? If I read my Bible right. So, don't let the devil put that on you. Oh, you're going to die. No, I ain't. Let me tell you something about your future, devil. You're going to burn in hell forever. That's in the Word of God. Say, you be that bold. You know what the Bible says. So I'm eternal, and so you are you. We are eternal beings, and we have eternal life because Christ died that we might have eternal life. Now, these bodies, I wouldn't want to take these. Would, how many want to take these bodies to heaven? Huh? No way. Eat too much, get, it gets blowed up. Don't eat enough, and you get skinny, Benny. We have our resurrected body. Hallelujah. Where'd Bob go? He disappeared. Last time I seen him, he was over there on Planet X. All right, we're having a little fun, but I tell you, I'm trying to blow your mind out, clean it out good, and realize the Lord has done great and wonderful things. All right, where are we at? So we come, we come. Now look at, look at this. That we may receive, receive, receive mercy for our failures. Oh, you mean we might fail sometimes? Yeah. Does God love me when I fail? Oh, yeah. Nothing changes his love. The psalmist said, if I fly to the other, the other side of whatever I fly to, if I go to hell and make my bed, he's there. He says, I'll never leave you, I'll never leave you, I'll never leave you. Never forsake you. If the Lord be for you, who can be against you? Wow. See, once your spirit gets that message, your spirit can, can, can sustain your infirmities of your body. This is why I stress Get into the Word of God. Soak it in. Read it. Memorize it. Meditate it on, it on it. Paul says to Timothy, meditate upon the Word of God that others might see you prospering. Fall in love with the Word of God. It's got life. How does it work? All right, let's see. How does blood pressure pills work? Boy, this is cool. Good breeze coming around here. Oh, that feels good. <laughs> you take that little pill, and it regulates your blood pressure. Now think of it. Take a little bit of the Word of God. It can regulate your emotions, your, regulate your faith. See, we need to put faith in the Word of God. Paul says to Thessalonians, I'm not speaking the word of man. It's the word of God that I'm speaking. I'm declaring to you tonight the word of God. Not the word of mere man. 
but the word of the living God. Either way, it doesn't matter how it goes, we got to victory. For what can separate us from the, from the love of God? Nothing. 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 What is there to fear? Nothing. What is there to worry about? Nothing. What can we do? If you can't worry, you can't fret, what is there to do? But praise the Lord for His mercy and His glorious grace. Hallelujah. I sit over there on the swing singing. Oh, my goodness. Just singing to the heavens and the sky, looking at everything. I see God everywhere. See, it just ain't God out there. It's God in here. It's God in me that fixes the door. See, I hurt my finger. My little finger there, see there? I ripped that thing open real good. The Lord says, Bob, you've got to be more careful. I said, yes, Lord. See, I talk with the Lord like I talk with uh, Mike. Did you have a good day? Lord, did you have a good day today? I thank you for this breeze, Lord. The trees are so beautiful. Wow. Lord, I want to thank you for my precious wife. Ah, that meal she fixed the other day. Did you enjoy it, Lord? I did. Oh, it's awesome. (laughs) Mama made me a, it's good, absolutely. Y'all don't do that? Talk. He's right. he, see, he wants, see, he wants fellowship. See, he saved us for fellowship. Everybody say fellowship. fellowship. You, know, you know what I, I desire for the body of, of Christ to, to grow to the point that when we're together, we're just fellowshipping so deeply in the spirit and, 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 and just sharing the Bible scriptures and experiences uh, that we have with God each day, and we're just fellowshipping with one another in the Lord. And my goodness, five hours has passed already, and hallelujah, half of us are on the floor, and the other half's on the wind, uh, out upon the chandelier. I, I mean, God, it's God, it's God. Anybody understand what I'm trying to say? This is what the word. Sometimes you have a longing. That's what you're longing for. How many how many wives are longing to fellowship with their husbands? And of course, they're busy with their opera lessons or something. No, you'll get your fellowship with the Lord. You connect. You relate to Him. Sometimes people grow, Susan and me have grown to that point, we fellowship. Oh, it's sweet. I could just look at her and it's just like, oh, man. Oh, wow. Whew. <laughs> See, you might not understand what I, you know. It, it, no, it has nothing to do with sex. So, sex. Now, when you get 95, forget about that. <laughs> no, it, it's, it's spirit to spirit. It's spirit to spirit. When's the last time a husband and wife has really connected spiritually? Hmm? Hmm? That's what you girls are looking for, you know. It's like, wow. You go out and your husband's working on the car. He says something romantic to you, like, hand me the wrench. <laughs> Get it yourself. I'm going in the house. <laughs> All right, I'm giving you a little appetite. All right, listen. God's grace, God's grace, God's grace. Can we understand the, the, the power, the, how much he loves us? Oh, if we could, oh, God, help us. No wonder Paul prayed, Lord, may they know the height, the depth, the width, the length of your love. Because perfect love casts out fear. Have you ever came to the point in the spiritual arena you felt so secure? 
I want to say that again. You really felt secure, fully accepted for who you are and not what you do or don't do. You feel and sense absolute acceptance that's available. That is available. And you, you know, <clears throat> how many remember the story of the uh, ten, the ten leopards? Remember the ten leopards? And only one came back and thanked Jesus. And the Bible says in the Amplified that he became whole. I'm going to say something. Not only does God want to heal you, he wants to make you whole. Spirit, soul, and body, and soul and mind, whole. That's what we're all longing for. Yeah, we have our salvation. If we die, we'll go to heaven. We're not going to die, but I mean, if our bodies do, does, our spirit goes to heaven. But there's something in every one of us. What's missing? Something's missing. What is it? We try this, and, and we thank God for all that he, you know, a good meal and, and, and uh, our cars and, and I don't care much for telephones, but my uh, grass cutter, you know, uh, my tractor. But do you feel fulfilled? Not putting none of us down, just asking a question. Because I believe that that, 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 that that scripture in James 4, 6, that certain tendency that works in us because of the fall of Adam stirs and we do not feel whole. And so we say, God, I need more and more of your grace to bring me into that whole person. I wonder how a whole person acts. I wonder how a whole person reacts. I haven't met many of them. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Very, uh, have I got you confused? <laughs> how many is confused? Don't raise your hand. All right, I'm trying to, I'm trying to say to all of us. There's a place in God. It doesn't matter how much money you got or who you are. You don't have to be the president of the United States to reach this status. All I know is that as we connect to God, the more we are connected to him by faith, we become whole. We become stable. Let's bring this down to the human level. Is there somebody that you feel secure when you're around? All right. You, you feel secure when you're around this person. You sort of feel sort of whole, don't you? All right. Anybody else? All right. Missy. You're around. And it's, it's, you feel comfortable. You feel whole. You feel it's a different feeling there. That, 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 that's something that's been missing is you got it at that moment. And, and I think I definitely feel that with my wife, Susan. I think when I'm with her, because, you know, we're one flesh. The two, the two will become one. And when that other one is not there, you don't feel whole. And there's so many things that come in between us and our mates that even though the wife, and usually it's the wife that's trying to, to nurture and woo the husband into this relationship of wholeness, of just being together, just talking, just communicating. Why? To dare to share your thoughts? Well, well 
But you see, that relationship is so soft. You share your thoughts, and all of your thoughts are totally wrong. Don't make no difference. You're not fearful because you feel one and connected with that person. You don't fear by being put down or nothing like that. Or he shares his thoughts. And you don't say nothing, even though you disagree with everything he says. But you hold on to that connection. You feed on that connection. The Spirit is making you one. See, we're one with the Spirit. Did you know that? Uh, are you listening? The Bible says that we become one with his Spirit. And we have so many things that come in and breaks that relationship. Because we're busy people. But even though we're busy, we can still develop that relationship with our Heavenly Father. And that's what He wants. How many times we have thought that salvation is all for us. Have you ever thought about salvation being for Him? We were created for what? For His what? For His pleasure. We were created for His pleasure. And when we please him, he pleases us. See, I'm talking spiritual now. Only those that are spiritual understand spiritual language. And, and this poor boy that just shot, went around shooting. How many seen that on the news? What was his problem? He couldn't connect with anybody. He couldn't connect with anybody. He felt that everybody hated him. He couldn't connect with girls. Man, when I was that age, I had to beat them off. <laughs> Didn't you, Willie? Yeah, talk, tell us about it. <laughs> 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 but what, the storm was in him. He was not whole. Couldn't get no attention, he felt. He felt, well, I'll get some attention now. Boom, 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 boom. God wants fellowship with us. And if we understand that and just some, some simplicity of just like a little child, I take Susan to, to the Bilo and, and the store, and I'm sitting in the car, and I watch the little kids get out of the car, and they... <laughs> they do their thing like that, you know, and, and the mother's got the hand back there. Come on, son, to get with it. we got to do some shopping, you know. <laughs> Gee whiz, mama's play. Can you do that, mom? Watch me again. <laughs> wow, man, out right in the parking lot. Three flips. He's saying, Mom, look at me. You know, me. Me, 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 me. Hey, Mom. The little girl's hairs are flipping in the air. I said, look at that. I said, oh, it reminds me of my kids, you know. Oh, come on, now. we got some shopping to do. Come on. We missed the whole nine yards. <laughs> I'll get you home, boy. I'm going to tear you up, but good. You hear me now? Kill his little spirit. Crush him. And he longs for that fellowship. Anybody. The first person comes along and shows them a little attention. They gone. Wrong company. They're gone. What are they looking for? Wholeness. Fellowship. We are created to bring pleasure to God through fellowshipping. And I know that many of you do that. These tapes go out. People don't hear stuff like this out there. Spend that time. Each day, God will increase it. At night, before I go to bed, I'll read a half an hour in the scriptures. In the morning, Susan, we spend a couple hours in the scriptures. We can do that now have our communion. We, we have to cut it off because there's things we have to do. 
So I said, come on, Lord, let's go get our work done. So the Lord and me and, and Susan and the Lord, and we just go, and, but we're always fellowshipping. I see people, like today when I was in the doctor's office, I had five or six people listening to me, even the, but Bob, aren't you scared that they, they kick you out? I just hug them before I, they kick me out. I said, God loves you. <laughs> say, you got to be that. Just, it's wonderful. But fear grips man and robs us. And those people were like, where do you go to church? I flip my cards out there. I say, here, tune into our website. Check me out. I answered every question that they had. Was Adam and Eve saved? Yes. Somebody tell me the scripture. Genesis what? 321. Got it. All right. Okay, well, time has passed, and I didn't really get down to my message, but come Sunday and we'll do the best we can. God bless you. I love you and go in grace and peace.